So hi, welcome back to Mountain Voice. Today I'm going to be doing a half Chernobyl and I'm going to be doing it in purple and black. So in the vise right now I have just a oh everyday size 10 dry fly hook. I'm going to be using cut pieces of 2 mil fly tying foam. I've got some 140 denier purple ultra thread and for dubbing on this, I'm going to be using a mix of the Ice Dub UV Brown here, which is kind of like a, a sparkly purple brown um, with kind of that UV reflection on it, as well as just a little bit of the um, Angora Goat purple dubbing uh, synthetic kind of mixed into it. So, start off with a fly, and, and well, maybe I should explain this too. So, a half half Chernobyl versus a full Chernobyl. So let me go ahead and grab one. I just dropped it. Okay. So here's the full Chernobyl. Um, I usually tie these on a uh, 2x long hook and as you see it's got uh, a double wing on here and uh, two sets of uh, doubled up rubber legs. So it has a it's an eight leg fly total. And the half Chernobyl, which I've got here, uh, just has a single wing and uh, a single pair of uh, rubber legs. So anyway, um, that's that's kind of the big difference. Now, this one you want a little bit longer hook shank, so like a 2x long hook versus a standard length hook. But really, that's about all the difference there is uh, between the two types of a Chernobyl and a half Chernobyl. So Start off with here now. Oh, I didn't uh, tell you what I'm going to be using for the tail and the wing. So for the tail, I've just got some crystal flash. And for the wing, I'm going to be using pieces of synthetic parapost. So here for my two sheets of uh, foam dubbing that I've cut down. And you want to make these about as wide as the hook gap right there. So. And when you put them on here, you want enough length on them so you'll have a little bit of an overhang on the front and maybe just a little bit more off the back. So that's kind of how you size your, your foam. To put these together with, I'm going to be using just some plain old super glue. But a note here that a brush applicator for your super glue will help quite a bit. So let's go ahead and super glue up the sides here. One side, I guess. Make sure it's kind of nice and consistent on here. You end up using a lot of super glue on this fly. And then just carefully trying to keep them nice and even, go ahead and put these two together. Well, it's not quite perfect, but, um, but that'll still work. Now I like to kind of notch my front and back. So for the front, just a few little shallow 45 cuts just to slightly round off the edge there. And then on the back, you can maybe give it some more longer taper on that. Or it can look the same as the front, doesn't really matter here. But I just like to do it so it, it looks like it has a little bit more taper to the foam body come there off the back. So just about like that, probably good enough. Now I'll go ahead and start my thread on the hook and I'm going to start about oh, a quarter of the way back on the hook shank. Start my thread wrap, snip off the tag. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this clear back to the bend, right about there. Now I'm going to grab two or three strands of crystal flash here. I'll just grab three. I'm going to kind of even up the ends a little bit there, more or less even.
something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, you can see these are a little bit longer than others. So maybe I'll fold them over, cut them in half there. Try to fold them over in half again. Sometimes this stuff can be kind of finicky to, to work with. If you have to switch hands, go ahead and do it. You just need enough to have a decent bundle there on the back to do the illusion, more or less illusion, of a tail. Here, maybe I'll simp them one more time. And there we go. There's enough material probably for two flies. And go ahead and lay these on. Make sure they're nice and secure. And now just so they, uh, they stay up and they get a nice little splay, once they're tied in like this, I might bring a wrap or two behind, just kind of like that, so they, they'll they stay up and so the foam body, when we put it on later, won't completely smush them down. So now I'm going to take my thread up near the eye, I'm not going to crowd it, and for this I just need another little small piece of foam, uh, doesn't matter what color at all because it's going to get covered over with thread and dubbing anyway. I like to kind of just picket fence, make a little point on the ends there to make it easier to tie in at the front. Go ahead and catch it in a wrap. Make sure it's nice and secure. Now, for this, I'm going to pull back on it. I'm going to put quite a bit of tension on this, just enough to not break it. And I'm going to go ahead and give some loosely spaced but, you know, pretty taut wraps on it until I get back to where I tied in my tail. And I'm going to give it a couple security wraps right there. So that's good. Now that that's in, what this will do is just help give a little bit more bulk to your fly because we're going to be overdubbing all this, but we want kind of a, a thicker body on this. So this really just helps build up some, some girth for your fly. And now it's time to uh, go ahead and dub. So, like I said before, and if you, you caught my video last week, I talked about mixing synthetic dubbings, and this is one of those instances where I will. So I'll get a nice little loose bunch of my ice dub, and maybe just a little bit less of this... Uh, Angora goat, which is, you know, pretty, pretty long fibrous stuff, so I'll get both in my hands here, and I'll go ahead and just give it a few chops, just make it a little bit smaller to work with here. And I'll kind of even start to preform my dubbing noodle, even, my, even in my hands, a little bit now, before I go ahead and put it on the thread. Where's my... Maybe just get a little bit of dubbing wax on your thumb and forefinger. You go to grab this. And we'll start twisting it on there. Lost a little bit of it. Now if you need to come back and dub it again, um, get more on here, you know, that's fine. So... Got my dubbing more or less on my thread now. It looks kind of even, maybe just a little bit bulkier at the bottom of there. So as we wrap forward, we'll get a little bit more taper out of it maybe. And I am just going to start to dub forward on this. Maybe I'll give my dubbing another twist as I go, or even kind of grab it by the dubbing so that it's 
going where I want it. That's just about perfect. So now I'm going to finish off and I'm going to leave myself maybe about a third of the way back on the hook shank right now is where I want my thread. And now it's time to work with our foam. So color variations on these things, um, you know, you can, you can do whatever color variations you want. Um, I do try to, if I'm going to do a two-tone like this, I do try to match my bottom piece of foam to my dubbing color or, you know, thereabouts, more or less matched. And so once we're at this step, I'm going to put a little bit more super glue on the bottom of my foam here. Just about like that. And I'm carefully going to seat it on the center here and get my front and back more or less where I want them. And I can just go ahead and press down and it'll just grab that dubbing right away and secure it. So now I'm going to make body segment here. A couple good wraps just like that. Really secure that, that foam body onto the rest of the fly. And now it's going to be time to uh, tie in some wing here. Now for the wing, um, I'm using this uh, Parapost material and it is really not thick enough for what I need. So again, I have a long strand of it. I'm going to grab myself maybe oh, two and a half inches on a side piece about like that. Double it over. Snip it. And then come back, snip it in the middle again. So now, when I put this on the fly, you know, I might even go, no, that's good right there, because we're going to double this over as we tie it. So let's kind of lay it on the middle here. Go ahead and give it. Maybe I'll put a little bit of wax right on my thread to help lock in that stuff right there. There we go. Two good wraps down. Maybe a wrap or two in front and a wrap or two behind. And our wing is nice and secure now. And it's time to move on to rubber legs. And where did I put my rubber legs? Stand by. There we go. They were clear over there. So for this, I've just got some uh, medium brown round rubber legs. And they come in these nice, basically, sheeting sheets of rubber legs. And I'm just going to grab one, pull it all the way off. Again, I need it probably about two, maybe maybe two and a half inches to work with on this. So that's the length I'll, I'll come down, double it over, snip it off right there. So now I'm going to lay them just right on top, more or less even. Give them some wraps. Maybe, maybe three good wraps. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull one side and then the other down to where the rubber legs are at the side of my foam body. So that one's at the side now. That one's down to the side. That looks good. And once they're where I want them, Go ahead and give another wrap or two. Now this, this step I'm going to show you isn't strictly necessary, but I find it really helps keep your wing 
in place and hold it down just a little bit. And that is to have another, um, another thin strip of foam. In this case, I'm kind of matching my, my under foam body. And I'm going to cut off, oh, maybe about 3 eighths of an inch piece of foam right here. And I'm literally going to end up gluing it uh, to the foam body and to the bottom of the wing right here and locking it in. And that's just going to keep that wing kind of in place a little bit more how I want. So it just, it kind of dresses up the fly and locks things together how I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a dab of super glue here on the end of it. Position it so it's, ah, don't glue it to your finger. Yeah, I just did. Position it so it's more or less in the middle and a little bit in front of our tie-in point. About like that right there. Go ahead and lock that in with some thread wraps. So I, I just think that makes the fly look just slightly neater and it gives it just, uh, um, gives the wing just a little bit more pressure to kind of hold it in place and hold it back a little bit and hold it together. So once that's done, I can see I didn't get enough super glue here on my foam body, so I'm gonna come back in and address that now. Hold those together. They're locked in. Good, just like that. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about my um, rubber leg loop hanging out in the way right here or about my wing right now. Uh, we can address those in just a minute after we get the fly, kind of the all the tying and thread work done. So now I need just a little bit more Dubbing, that's a little too much. Grab a pinch of both that I'm working with here. Yeah, and I'm just gonna kinda put them in my hand. Chop them up, make them just slightly finer so they're a little easier to work with. So they don't come out quite so bushy on the underside of the fly. Kind of make my pre-noodle here in my hand. And then go ahead and work them onto the thread. So what's this, this is gonna do? This is just gonna hide our, our thread wraps here that we have around this body segment. So I'll kind of run my noodle up Choke up on my thread a little bit. And just bring them around. Maybe two good wraps. Then I'm gonna hold everything back. And I don't need quite that much dubbing, so I might get rid of some of that excess. And we'll bring it into the front of the fly right there. Now it's time to whip finish. So I'll kind of hold that foam piece back as I do my whip finish head, you know, four, five, six turns, just like that. Go ahead and snip my thread. And now it's time to start the fly manicure here. So to lock the whip finish in place, I'm just going to use a little bit of clear nail polish here. Just get a dab of that right there on those threads up top. So now once that's done, I can kind of look at my fly proportions here. And I think I might have gotten my, my foam just a little bit long. So I'm going to take off oh, a little bit off the front here. Make sure it's kind of cut nicely. Round off those corners again just a little bit. And maybe same thing on the back. 
I'll just take off a little bit of the abdomen end here too. That was just looking a little too, little too extreme. But you can always take foam off once it's cut. You can't put it back. So when in doubt, leave yourself a little bit longer strips to work with. And I'll kind of retaper the butt end of this thing again. Kind of like that. Okay, so now that's done. Um, for my kind of flashy undertail here, I want it just a little bit longer than the end of the abdomen. So let's come in and snip that off. And this is enough to do another fly with, so you can kind of set that to the side. Now for my wing, same thing. I really don't want it going any further back than my, uh, my abdomen, so I'll just kind of hold it down, come to the end there, snip that off right there. And that might be enough to work with with another fly, but mm, maybe not. That's kind of pushing it, so, you know, maybe be mindful about your material so you're not wasting a whole bunch of material just on one fly. Now for the legs, I'm going to kind of hold my uh, legs to the side of the loops there, and I'm going to go ahead and split the, the loop. And for length of these legs, again, I'll hold my, my front legs kind of towards the edge of the body. I want them to extend just a little bit past the end. So I'll go ahead and snip them off like that. And same with my rear legs. Um, I'll probably want them about that same, you know, barely past the end. So there you go. There is a size 10 half Chernobyl. So these will work really well um, as kind of big terrestrial bugs, uh, especially when the water's a little bit murky. So like up here, up here in Montana. So. Um, you know, murky water day when uh, the squallows are coming off and everything. This would be a really, really good pattern. So have fun with this one. Um, try a bunch of variations between, like I was saying, um, with like the full Chernobyl, with the double wing, and uh, different colors with uh, dubbing and underbody and foam and everything else like that. So happy tying, and I'll see you next time.